What's going on, everybody? It's the Scene Snob here, Mick Manhattan, back again with another episode of the Scene Snobs podcast. And uh, let's just jump right in because we have a lot going on. So uh, I know I'm solo this week. Uh, I am actually been looking for a co-host, so stay tuned. I am trying some people out. Had a lot of fun with Kenny last week. Uh, I have a couple more things coming up, which I'll explain to you soon. Um, and it's just a lot of stuff going on with the scenesnobs.com. So hopefully you guys are getting uh, getting excited for that as much as I am. Like, I, I can't wait. Um, so we have, uh, next week is our John Carpenter Appreciation Week. So every show is going to be slated, uh, is slated to have a theme on John Carpenter. So we're going to do the 20-Minute re- Wrestling Podcast. I bet you can't guess what I'm going to do for that. <laughs> Um, the Scene Sounds podcast is going to be John Carpenter oriented. Um, we're going to have a marriage like that challenge between me, Mrs. Scene Snob, uh, John Carpenter edition. Um, and a couple other things, uh, you know, Scene Snob reviews, uh, some things that are just going to be fun. So, uh, and it all kind of culminates onto a new show that's premiering next week. And that is Behind the Box, which is, we call it the Video Store Degenerates. So, uh, it's me and Rob Gosher, my co-host. And it's all about the cult classics, the ones we loved, and the action, sci-fi, horror, film, all that, all those sections that, you know, like maybe not many people will go to. Many people will go and try and find all the new releases beyond the box, but we were the ones, we were the ones that saw I spit on your grave cover and had to chase it and run it down and hope it was behind the box to get that VHS. But, uh, yeah, so that's what we're doing, and, uh. That's going to be, the first episode is going to be completely John Carpenter themed, so we're excited. Um, hopefully you've checked out the first two episodes of uh, my new po- podcast with uh, Skyline Indie Film Festival um, creator Brian Patrick, and that is Pulling Focus Podcast. Uh, we're very excited about that one, and it's a filmmaker-oriented podcast, um, so lots of things going on. You can go to the thescenesnobs.com and find all the links to everything. Um, and check it out, and definitely hit us up. Uh, make sure you hit the like buttons, the subscribe buttons, the notifications. Daily, we have uh, new stuff coming out. We have some new podcasts coming out down the line, too. So we're definitely excited. Um, lots of stuff happening. Uh, we are sponsoring Lost Weekend 13 Film Festival, which is coming up in March from 19th to 22nd at the uh, Alamo Draft House in Winchester, Virginia. And that is, that's being put on by the Film Club, Psycho Cinema, and Still Awesome. And we are super excited for that, to be a sponsor of that. And, uh, yeah, so there's 44 films, a $40, uh, a for, a $40 um, weekend pass will get you to any of the films and all the festivities. Or you can buy individual for certain movies you want to go see. Uh, I will be there. I will be very excited. Uh, so if you see me, come out, talk to me. Definitely want to hear what you think about the films, what you think about the site, what's going on. So, um, yeah, so your truly Lucy and Snow will definitely be out there. So, But if you haven't got a ticket check, go check that out. You can get them on the uh, Alamo app. Uh, you can go through the links on the uh, the film club's uh, Facebook page. Uh, Winchester, you know, Winchester Alamo face, uh, Film Club. So... You know, I've been doing a lot of stuff with the Alamo lately, and I'm very excited. We also are going to be proud sponsors as well of Psycho Cinema's third overnight um, marathon party, which is called Psychorama. If you can see the two bags behind me here with all my pins on them, those are from the first two Psychoramas. It was very cool. Um, had a lot of fun with that. The first one was in the summer, and the theme was hot and slaughtered, so it was a lot of like hot movies ended with demon night like but i mean they had some very cool stuff they had uh started with um hard ticket to hawaii you know we saw zombie we saw devil fish um we saw you know like i said ended with demon night we saw a uh, psycho beach party um and there's a there's one i'm missing and i feel bad but it's getting a little late but i will find out for you and i will i will state it but then we had the, uh, in October, we had the second one, uh, and which was awesome. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I did, however, kind of die out early, uh, which I am ashamed to admit. But, I mean, they showed some very cool stuff. They showed the Manitou. If you've never seen that, go check it out. It's a very cool little cult classic film. Um, starring Tony Curtis, of all people. Um, they had, uh, they showed um, Hellraiser. They showed House. They showed... Um, 
tons of movies. They, they showed like some really cool movies. And I'm excited to find out because on March 10th they're having the reveal for the third one where they're going to tell us all the movies. Um, so I'm super excited to go to that. Uh, and I'm a big supporter of what Alamo is doing, all the clubs, especially PC. They have a special place in my heart. Um, they do great work over there. Faye is great. Uh, she hosts everything. And she tries real hard to get us some really cool movies to go and check out on the big screen. So, Psychorama, I'm happy to be a sponsor. And I cannot wait. Um, yeah, and go check out. Uh, tickets aren't on sale for that yet. They will be on sale on the 10th when they do the reveal. So, make sure you keep an eye out. It's just a very fun event with some very cool people. Nice communal vibe. Uh, and we go and we watch cool, campy, culty movies. And it's fantastic. So, that's going on. Um, some fun stuff, man. And uh, we're doing, I have an interview with uh, A.T. White, who is the director of a movie called Starfish. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. They're showing it on the big screen at the Alamo on, I know I'm talking a lot about the Alamo, but this is where all the stuff's going on and the scene sounds heavily involved. So I'm super excited to talk about it and I want them to have the business. So the, Starfish is going to be on the big screen with a Q&A with A.T. White on Saturday at 5 p.m. So if you're in the area, go get tickets because I just watched it the other day for the first time. I had to see it because I'm interviewing um, um, A.T. White on Saturday as well for the Scene Sons podcast. So look for an extra episode of that. And it is an awesome movie. And I'm not going to go too in-depth because I did a Scene Snobs review um, of Starfish and... Uh, I, I gushed over it and I talked about, you know, things I really loved about it. But if you haven't seen it, if you're not going to be in the area and you can't get tickets, go on Hulu. And I also believe it's on Amazon Prime. Watch this movie. It's fantastic. So, uh, that's, with that being said, um, let's jump into a few other things. We got tons of stuff going on. You can see a couple of things like, you know, I've, I've props I've put in front of the camera, which, uh, you know, maybe the Snake Plissken and the Thing you kind of get with the John Carpenter theme going on next week. Make sure to check out all the shows. It's going to be a lot of fun. But we're going to definitely get into that. And if you don't know who that is, you'll find out. Because I'm only saying his name once. And I'm not doing it until I talk about it. So, But I do want to talk about... So I want to get into comics a little bit. We have some things that have been coming out. We've got new footage from the new Batman movie. And that's starring uh, Robert Pattinson. Um, I know it seems like a lot of people are torn. Now, here's my thing. I know you might have heard me talk about Kristen Stewart before. You, I did not like the Twilight movies. They were not for me. That's just... I like... You know, give me my vampires like the Lost Boys or things like that. So, um, it just wasn't for me. I don't care that people loved it. It did well. Good. It's great. But I just, those aren't vampires, in my opinion. And Robert Pattinson and Kristen Stewart were not great actors in that movie. I think Robert Pattinson would say that. But I'll tell you, when I saw Water for Elephants, that dude blew me away. And I've watched everything he's done since, except The Lighthouse. I'm waiting on that. I, wanna, I really want to see that, though. Um, I've seen everything he's done since then. And anybody who's a hater because of Twilight... And says, you know, why is this guy Batman? Eh, get over it. He's he's a great actor. So I now, when you say Robert Pattinson to me is Batman, it's hard for me to see it. It's not that I'm against it. It's not that I don't think he has the acting chops, because I definitely do. So, but for me, it's I just don't see it. He just... It's it's like a very actiony role. I just I, I didn't I when I when I heard his name I was like I, I just don't like when Bat, Ben Affleck did it I'm like yeah I get that, um, but at the same time too I didn't see it when it when I heard Christian Bale either, or I didn't definitely didn't see it when I heard George Clooney and I don't think anybody saw it, um, so haha -ha. um, yeah Val Kilmer. It was like Robert Pattinson was such is such a great actor. Like when he got the role, it was like, yeah, I'll pull it off. You know, they're just that good. So I'm anxious. I like the pictures I've seen so far. The suit looks kind of cool. It looks like they're going to go with the younger Batman. I don't think year one, but probably within the proximity of that, uh, those, that comic, that, uh, that novel. Um, so I'm excited to see where they take it. Uh, 
I I wonder if they're going to dissociate it from the F like that, man. DC is so up in the air with everything right now. I have no idea what's going on, what's coming down. Like, you go to a Marvel movie, and you know where you are. And if you don't know where you are, you don't need to. Like, you can go see them on their own merit. But if you go see, if you're a Marvel fan and you like all the movies, and you get mixed up or whatever, and you go see, like, you know where you are. It, it picks right back up. You know where this character's going. They explain everything else. Everything's intertwined. They've screwed up with DC so bad. It's, it's sad. It's just sad. And I'll tell you, the Shazam movie was really good. Like, there's only a couple of movies I've really liked. Uh, I was not a big fan of Joker. I know a lot of people liked it, but I just, just wasn't a big fan. I just wasn't for me. You know, I, I, I didn't love it. I'm just the same reason that I don't love Taxi Driver. I understand the filmmaking side of it. I get it. I know why, it, you know, it's intriguing. I know why it's, a, you know, good and a lot of people like it. Like, it did well. I can't say it's a bad movie. But it wasn't for me. It didn't reach me, you know. So, as far as a comic book movie, it definitely didn't reach me. I didn't think that was at all in any way, shape, or form a comic book movie. And I didn't, I don't, because of such, because the Joker for me is such a beloved character, I never really wanted to know. I've got it in the books and things like that, like his backstory and like what's come up here and there. I didn't really need to know too much. Um, and so like, I just wasn't as interested, but I was definitely gonna see it with how well it was doing. But I saw it, it didn't speak to me. It just wasn't my cup of tea. But, uh, you know, I, the Batman looks like it's gonna be a little bit more, kind of bring me back into it. So I'm, I'm definitely interested. As much as I hated Batman vs. Superman and despised Justice League, um, which is so sad for me to say, I, I still, like, for anybody who doesn't know, like, if you go over to my comic book collection over here, I have a lot of Marvel. And that's because Marvel has an array of characters that I just love and adore. And DC does too, but I kind of always stuck to the Justice League. You know, like, I never really bounced outside of that. Um, but I loved the Justice League. Like, you know, I read the Superman, the action comics. I read the Detective comics, Batman comics, Superman comics. Um, Wonder Woman, uh, Green Lantern, Flash. Like, you know, I got the backstories. I understood them. They, they were my characters. I loved them. I actually, I actually appreciated and adored them more than, I would say, the Avengers. Uh, so... I'd say the only one I'd put maybe on the same level as like Batman and Superman is Spider-Man. So with that being said, like I really truly loved DC Comics growing up. So the movies have really kind of been letting me down. And I've been kind of sad about that. So when I saw Justice I didn't even go see Justice League in the theater. I waited until it came out and I rented it. I after Batman vs. Superman disappointed me so much. And took so much away from me that I, you know, I really loved about these characters. Um, it was hard for me to go see Justice League, especially how it looked. And now, it, the Snyder Cut may be great. And if it comes out, I'll rent it and I'll check it out. I will give it to, its fair due. And if it's even better, like, I love the director's cut of Watchmen more than I love the theatrical version. So, maybe it is better. Maybe he answers some questions. But there's some things that I just was not appreciative of. Um, and I just didn't like. And I was glad that I waited to rent it. But that it was a sad day. Because it was the Justice League. To tell me... If I told myself 10 years ago who would, would never... Or 20 years ago. Or 30 years ago. If I told myself I'm not going to go see the Justice League movie in the theater... And those versions of myself would kick my butt all over the place. Why? Because they were in much better shape than I was, uh, than I am now. And also, they're just, like, they didn't, they never fathom there would be a Justice League movie. They would never, if you told them Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman were going to be in a movie together, no, they wouldn't have believed you. Because it didn't happen. Because we never got. Michael Keaton and Christopher Reeve in a movie together. And we always wished it would be, you know? And then bring Linda Carter in, 
You know, like we wanted that. So when you finally say, if I said to them, yeah, I didn't go see it in theater. I, I kind of wouldn't blame them for kicking my butt. But at the same time, it's a testament to what DC did. Um, it's testament to poor storytelling. Uh, I'm not even blaming the actors. I liked Henry Cavill as uh, Superman. I love Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. She's perfect. And I have some apprehensions with her. But the first Wonder Woman, she blew it out of the water. Uh, and she, she was the best part of Batman vs. Superman. So I was excited when her movie came out. Now, with all this being said, um, DC is a near and dear place in my heart. So when I was looking at the pictures for, uh, they showed Catwoman, they showed Batman, they're on motorcycles, kind of the way they're dressed up. Like, they're kind of going with some cool styles for it. Uh, so I am excited. I, I want to see what the story is. It looks like Colin Farrell is going to play the Penguin, most likely. Um, I don't know if that was verified or not, but I have heard it and... He kind of looks like he put on some weight for the role. So, um, I'm excited. It's got some good actors. Let's check it out. Uh, but I don't know where to go from there. I, I, I just hope it's good. I mean, I hope it speaks to me. I hope it's not like Joker where they take it too seriously. Like, I love Batman Begins. I love The Dark Knight. And I loved, uh, a little bit less, but I did still loved it, was The Dark Knight Rises. They took it very seriously. They took Batman very seriously. But we didn't have Batman for years since Clooney. So when they came back with it, it was revived. It was new. It was refreshing. It was it was telling the story of the world we were living in at the time. So it meant a lot. But then they gave us Man of Steel. And it's like, okay, we're kind of going back to not as real. Like, it's grittier, but it's not, you know, there's still like... It could fit in that world, but at the same time, it kind of doesn't. So, and only having Smallville for so long and not having, and not having, um, really anything else for a while, uh, it was nice to have a grittier Superman. A lot of people didn't like, like that movie. They didn't like that he killed Zod. Superman doesn't kill, blah, blah, blah. But there's always an origin, and I thought that was a good one. I thought if he was going to kill anybody, he was going to kill what he deemed the worst threat. But I digress. I, I want to go back and say, like, so they that opened that opened the door, and then Batman v Superman and all these others started coming. Wonder Woman blew it out of the water. I'm a little apprehensive about the second Wonder Woman. Uh, I'm hoping it it was taken seriously and it worked for the first one, um, but it, like it had that gritty style, kind of like how Man of Steel did, but it wasn't over the top like Batman vs. Superman or Justice League or anything else. So, I am apprehensive about the second one because it seems like it is going to go over the top with that one. Uh, I think bringing Steve Trevor back, however they do it, is probably a bad idea. I love Chris Pine. I, I want Chris Pine as my Captain Kirk for the next 10 years and give me like 10 more movies. I thought I think he's great. Now, and I thought that, you know, I'm a big fan of the third one, Star Trek Beyond, more so than the other two. Uh, I just thought it was a better, more fun story. But, again, I digress. I'm going back to DC Comics. So, with that being said, all these movies have kind of been tanking in my eyes. And I hope the Batman, I'm going to go see the Batman. I hope it does well. I'm going to go see Wonder Woman 84. I hope it does well. I hope they're good stories and they're fun. I hope they reach me like most comic book movies that I love do. Shazam was good. I'm and The Rock is supposed to come to be Black Adam. I'm excited. Let's bring it on. I want to see it. But here we go. With all of these mishaps that I'll call them for now in the DC film world, I've had DC Comics to kind of fall back on. Now they haven't been great lately, but there are some things you can enjoy. Um, you know, in, in the last few years, they just keep rebooting and rebooting and rebooting. And I thought it was finally done. I thought after the last one, which was only a couple years ago, they re they would reboot. And now it seems like we're getting another reboot. And here's the problem with that. We had uh, Dan D um, the Dio, I believe is his name. He was the publisher of DC since like early 2000. I think he's been there for like 18 years, I read. So 2002, I guess. He stepped down. Well, I actually don't know if he stepped down. I heard he was gone. So I don't know. In the articles, it just says he's gone. He's not publisher anymore. So 
I don't know where he is, what it, what's going on. I don't know what happened. Um, I heard that this new project they're going with 5G, which is going to be probably a reboot. You know, just kind of ushering in something new into DC Comics. If it's if it doesn't do well, that's the end of DC Comics. I hate to say it, but and the AT and T CEO stepped in and was like, "If this doesn't work out, uh, it's gone." You know, uh, and that's sad. It's scary because it's not going to work out because they haven't been taking these reboots seriously. It seems like it seems like we're over fifty years of comic history in DC when they finally had to do Crisis on Infinite Earths they took years to tell that story leading up to it then to finally say okay we're reimagining everything we're going back to certain things we're taking out characters who were there blah 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 and it was a huge ordeal that's why it was so successful then they started it again with Identity Crisis um, and that was their building up to it it was going well and then they were starting to get into the crisis mode and that flopped. They just didn't know. And then they did new 52, which just didn't work out. I didn't mind it as much, but it wasn't as great. And it just didn't work out. It, it felt more like a plea to try and get as many new people and as many young people reading comics again, which I, again, I'm okay with. I'm okay with rehashing things and, um, and kind of, Updating them for the generation, the new generation, so you can get more kids buying comics. That's the important thing. Like, as much as I'm a comic book nerd, and you know, any of you are comic book nerds who are my age or older or whatever, they're not for us. They're for us to enjoy. We can enjoy them. We can get comics. There's nothing wrong with that. There's okay to be a fan of everything, but comic books shouldn't be made for us, and we should know that better than anybody because we are the generations that suffered loving comics. Now it's not taboo. Now it's not, you're going to get beat up if you're reading a comic book at school. Now it's accepted. Comic book characters on t-shirts and things like that, they're accepted. I can send my school, my kids off to school wearing a Superman shirt or a Batman shirt or a Star Wars shirt or anything, any of the geekdom. And they go and they don't get picked on. Everybody else is into it. It's actually sort of a sign that you're cool because you know these characters. So, I, you know, my plea is like, because it seems like all of these reboots, it seems like since 52, like New 52 was kind of getting a little grittier. Um, so I shouldn't say they were going too young for it, which they should have been, in my opinion. And here's my argument. I should have said this earlier, but New 52 seemed like it was going for like the college age kids and maybe in their 20s um you know but being gritty or being sexier and all whole nine and but the problem with that is comic books should not be written for guys like us or girls who are our age we should be able to enjoy them they should not be dumbed down for children they should deal with real issues like they always have and, and adult issues even you know but they should be for kids to read with hope in their eyes and just enjoy what they're seeing. So then that way they go out and they play these superheroes and, you know, they pretend and they grow up loving these superheroes. So we're creating, we're keeping the fandom going. Next generation is going to grow up and love them too. But I think because I think comic books have reached a decline, not because it's a reading printed material. I really truly believe that it's declined because we weren't, they weren't there to nurse the younger generation of kids, you know, like it, and that's what they needed to be. They needed to be that, you know, a lot of people will say, well, Wonder Woman is meant to inspire girls of a young age. Yeah, I get that. She always has been, but when you make her deal with bigger issues and she's sleeping with Superman and, and this, that, and the other thing, like, Parents don't want to buy that for their younger girls. And the same with Superman and the same with Batman and this, that, and the other thing. Like the graphic novels are always sort of like for the older guys and girls. You know, please don't when I say guys, I'm from Jersey, so 
it usually covers, it's a blanket statement of covering people who love it, the fans. So please don't take offense to it. So, but that was, that's what it was for. So I think we've taken away from it a bit when we don't, when we haven't been writing for the youngest generation, the ones that should be picking them up and saying, I need this going, I need it the next week, I need this, I need this, 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 and this. When we're writing for guys who are 38 and up, or, you know, maybe 30 and up, we're alienating all these new fans that are coming in, and we're only sticking to the small majority. Because, like, the now it seems like everybody, like, it drives me nuts when I go on Facebook and I see somebody who treated me like crap in high school. Really treated me like crap. You know, because they have kids, it's like, oh, man, Marvel movies are great, this, that, and the other thing, I love it, I love it, I love it, comic books, blah, 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 or Star Wars, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you used to beat the crap out of me. Not, like, jokingly, like, really beat the crap out of me and tear my comic books up and this, that, and the other thing. Um, and, and that happened to a lot of geeks back in the day. But now it's cool to like this stuff. So you're opening it up to those parents if you write for their kids. And maybe you're making kids, you'll make kids that aren't going to be a-holes, you know, when they get older. Because the fans are usually the ones that are, read this stuff and are inspired by it. That's my argument. And it's sad that, um, you know, I'm hearing that a DC might close down. Now, there is another speculation. And it's kind of exciting. And that is, Marvel may save DC Comics. And I would be 100,000% okay with that. Now, I'm not saying DC Comics doing too well on their own. Uh, they also, I think, have been writing for the older generation and the fans, like I said, for DC. I don't think, I think that's all comic companies. That's all they've been doing. Uh, nobody's really writing for the kids. But Marvel hasn't been rebooting every two years, 18 months. Um, they've been, you know, maybe reinventing characters here and there and doing things. And that's fine. That's not a reboot, in my opinion. That's not taking the whole universe. Now, they did it. Don't get me wrong. I know they did it when they did, um, what is it, uh, Secret Wars Saga in, what, 2015? So they did it again. And it kind of reset itself. But it did add some elements, characters that we like, and put together with these characters and this, that, and the other thing. Um, I would say it was just, it worked. Not great. It wasn't a greatly told story, but it worked. And kind of revived it a little bit, I think. But bring, let them take over. I mean, if they're willing to take over and keep DC alive and in the comics. But I just, I make a plea with everybody. Just start writing for the kids again. Again, you don't have to dumb it down. Stan never did that. You know, none of nobody did. Like these, these heroes dealt with real issues that were going on that kids faced too, and it would be wonderful if we could see that. Do you remember the nine eleven Marvel comic? Does anybody? Do you still have it? I have it right over here. When these superheroes and these villains are distraught, their city was just demolished and taken out, and they had you know like this is that was something that spoke to people who lived there. I lived in. Right across the water from it. You know? I, I was right there. I was trained FD, FDNY. So, I understand. Like, I, you know, I met guys who have lost people. And it's just... It's sad that... And, you know, my partner was uh, NYPD at the time. And then he came over and we were out on the emergency response team uh, years later. But, so, like, what I mean is, like, that's a, that was something that they did that, like, touched everybody. Everybody could read that and say, okay, these heroes, like, they didn't dumb down the heroes. They spoke to children at the time. And I think that brought up a wave, like, who are now becoming new parents. Um, but they're not doing that anymore. And I know I'm harping on this a lot. And I don't want to harp on it too much, because there's a lot of stuff going on. And, you know, but what I'm saying is, like, I hope that's a change that happens. Start writing for kids more. Be, take it seriously, do it right, 
good storytelling, but it doesn't have to be all flash in the pan, sexy, 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 violent, violent, violent. Tell the good stories. There's so much going on in the world that kids probably need a little hope. They need these superheroes to be dealing with with them. You know, and, and yeah, I'm just hoping it kind of goes that route. So, with that being said, like, I just want to touch down on a couple other things. Uh, I kind of went on a little longer than I thought I would with that. Um, but that's my emotional plea for the week, I suppose. So, Steven Spielberg, another <laughs> breaking thing, I should say. Uh, Steven Spielberg is not going to direct Indy 5, Indiana Jones 5. Iris Ford will be back. Uh, they're filming relatively soon, I think. Um, I think they have everything in place, but he's not going to direct it. He just came out and didn't give a reason why, other than he thinks it's time for somebody younger to kind of step in. Um, you know, maybe not, you know, I mean, James Mangold is the one that's in talks right now. Uh, so younger, definitely. Uh, and so it's for the next generation. So like, Here's the funny thing. I don't want to see Steven Spielberg not do it. Steven Spielberg has done every one. Uh, I think George Lucas had a big hand in kind of where the Crystal Skull went wrong. Uh, more so than Spielberg. Uh, those are rumors I've heard anyway. Um, but uh, I'm a little torn in the sense that like, I hate to see Spielberg go. And James Mangold's He's a fine director. I mean, he did Logan, and Logan was good. And Logan was a really good movie. So dealing with an older character, older, I don't want to say superhero character, but, um, you know, he is sort of superhero. If, you know, that, that could be interesting. I mean, I, Ford versus Ferrari, the Wolverine, like, he does good stuff, so I think he could pull it off. Um, I I'm excited for it. Uh, if he does it, or if they get somebody good, they, they're going to have to get somebody good who can pull this off. Um, and then hopefully they can run with it. But that's the thing. Like, do you run with it? How do you run with it with Harrison Ford? Like, this should be it for Harrison Ford. And if you're doing that for the new generation, shouldn't you have done an Indy... Like, this is where I'm at. Do Indy 5. Get Steven Spielberg back with Harrison Ford. Do Indy 5. Finish it off right. Don't try to pass the torch to Shia LaBeouf or <clears throat> anybody else for that matter. Just do it right. Play it out. And then say, this is the end. We're going to do more Indiana Jones. But we're going to do it with a younger cast. And it's going to bring it back more towards the beginning. Fine. You gave us a good ending. You know, hopefully I, I'd be down for that. But don't quit now. But then again, it, it tells me, like, should, you know, I, when I go to DC Comics, shouldn't they be written for the younger younger generation? Uh, yes, but like I said, I think I think it should have been Steven Spielberg giving us one good one before he left with Harrison Ford, and then after that, I would have been fine with remake it, because Harrison Ford can't do it forever. Uh, even in the last one, he was looking way too old for it. And I didn't want Shia LaBeouf to take over because nobody can take over indie unless you're it's still indie. You know what I mean? Like if if they go back and they reinvent the character and he's younger and they got Chris Pratt or whoever else, Chris Pine, whoever you want, I don't care. You did that, then I'd be okay with it because it's still Indiana Jones. It's not Indiana Jones's son. So I I, I just I kind of wish that we got we were gonna get more out of this. I wish Spielberg would stay on for this last one and again, then pass the torch. Maybe say James Mangold, take it and, you know, direct a new one with the younger guy and, and keep it alive for younger generations. But is what it is. Um, I hope it's good. That's just where I'm at. I just hope it's good. I, yeah, that's it. That's where it's at. So, I mean, I don't know, though, because Bob Iger's out. And I, we're going to cover this one probably on the Pulling Focus podcast, which records tomorrow. Brian and I will. So I just want to touch down on it. Bob Iger was the CEO of Disney. Now, Bob Iger, if I, sorry, Bob Iger was the reason for Marvel getting bought by Disney. 
Lucasfilm's getting bought by Disney. Fox being built, bought by Disney. The parks being the way they are now. Um, like bigger than life and all these different lands and everything. Uh, Bob Iger really like, he was an ambitious character. Uh, and he did a lot for the business. So, <clears throat> um, with that, he's out now. There's no real reason to it. Uh, there's been speculation. Is he going to run for president? You know, there could be anything. He could be sick. He could be, there could be a, a scandal. There could be anything. He could just be tired and not want to do this anymore. Um, surprised with how well Disney's been doing. Um, maybe there's going to be a big hit coming out or something. Uh, like a big hit in, in money or something. But I don't, I, I'm speculating. And I, I don't want to do that. I, I'll do that on the podcast tomorrow. But Bob Chappick is in. Supposedly they're saying nothing's going to change. They're going to keep going with the route they're going. Um, but it, it's very suspicious that Bob Iger's out earlier in the week. And then like a couple of days later, Spielberg's out. Spielberg doesn't want to do it. And Spielberg is not primarily known for working with Disney. You know, he, when he did this, he did not work with Disney. Uh, they bought the rights to with, uh, with Lucasfilms. So with that, I'm a little, it's a little worrisome, like, is this have something to do with it? Bob Iger leaving have something to do with Steven Spielberg not wanting to direct. And if that's the case, that's sad because the movie's going to suffer for it. Now it's not about a new generation, this, that, or the other thing. It's what happens. So, I'm a little, I'm a little upset about that, but uh, like I said, I'll talk about it a little bit more, but... Um, Maybe not so much upset as in, like, kind of like an awe that he's gone. Uh, not that I love the guy or anything like that. I mean, I don't know. But um, he's been doing some cool stuff, and I was actually anxious to see where he goes from there. So I don't know if Bob Chappick, who's taken over, uh, is going to be the same way. Uh, I've heard different things about him as well. Like, he's more conservative with money and stuff like that. So I don't think that really will happen. But we'll see. Now... One of the main things I want to talk about tonight uh, is this gentleman right here. So, we have a brand new trailer just came out. Now, I got excited a few weeks ago when I saw the Chris Rock trailer for the new Saw movie, which is called Spiral. It looks awesome. It looks like, again, they're re-imaging um, a horror movie. And that's not uncommon now. Like, if you remember 10 years ago, around that time, everything was being remade. They're remaking everything. It's all a remake. Remake, remake, remake. And it sucked, most of them. Not everyone, but it sucked, most of them. Um, and I just wanted the original franchises continued, but in a good way. And now I'm not going to say that Halloween did it, but Halloween did it right. And I loved the twenty what was it the twenty eighteen Halloween movie. I, I thought it was fantastic. They reimaged it. They brought it back. They made, you know they they kept the old in there. You know the um, the first movie like you just it felt good. But I, I was saying to myself, I'm like, I wish more and more would do that. And one of them would be Nightmare on Elm Street. Ever since the rights went back to the Craven Estate. They were looking for filmmakers to come out and talk about it. And I was begging, begging on different message boards and comments and things like that. Please, if you're gonna if you're gonna take it, which is going to Netflix now, if you're gonna do it, just do what Halloween did. You don't have to get Robert England back. I get it. Incorporate him in some way because it's Robert England and he absolutely deserves to be there. But you know, if you don't want him to play Freddy, fine. But go back and Make it part of the franchise. But make it good. You know, if you want to skip a couple of them or whatever, um, fine. But just keep it within that franchise. You know, don't remake it. It was remade already and it didn't work. So I really hope that with the amount of good horror filmmakers out there that can come on and direct this, I really hope they get somebody good and somebody good to write it. And it's, it's kind of a re-imaging of the original franchise that's still in line. 
Now, with that being said, it looks like we are getting that with the brand new trailer that came out for, and I'm only saying this once, once, will not say it again. You can't pay me enough to say it five times. Uh, and I will not even get, I will not even go past once. So once I say it, from then on in, the movie that shall not be named is what I will call it. And that is the new Candyman trailer came out. Now we are getting a new Candyman. Ah, I said it twice. Uh, all right, I better watch myself. I am not saying that anymore. So the movie that shall not be named um, is uh, directed by Nia DaCosta. She directed Little, uh, is it Little Women? Not Little Women. Little Women was uh, Little Woods. Little Woods, sorry. Um, it came out a few years ago. Um, and uh, Jordan Peele is producing it. And now I'm telling you right now, I'm in because it's Jordan Peele. I know a lot of people are, uh, you know, they're kind of cut down the middle on them. Great. Get Out was great. Everything else sucked. Like, no, you're wrong. Get Out was great. Us was great. The, um, the Twilight Zone is great. Uh, Hunters, which I just watched and my scene sign review is up, is great. And you can find out why when you watch that. So, and, you know, Key vs. Peel is great. So, everything this guy really touched is great. So why wouldn't the movie that shall not be named be great? Uh, I'm very excited for it. I want, oh, sorry. Um, I want this to be connected to the original, and it looks like it's going to be. It stars uh, Yahya Mateen, uh, Abdul Mateen too, which if you know him, he's been in some very cool stuff. He was in the first Purge. And he was the best part about the first purge. So super excited for him to come in. He's like, he's an actor. I'm, I'm swiftly becoming like obsessed with wanting him in more movies because he's just a great actor. And he was in the new Watchmen series. He was in a lot more than that. You should check it out. He played, um, Manta in, uh, Black Manta in, uh, Aquaman, which was the only good part about that movie. Um, but, Regardless of that, like he's uh, he was in the Watchmen, he was great in that. Um, so I'm excited to see him in the movie that shall not be named, and he is taking the lead role. He is um, basically the story looks like it's he's an artist who becomes obsessed with this character right here um, and his lore, you know. And Cabrini Green, he, you know, he seems like he's in Chicago, so. Um, he takes it and he puts up like sort of an art studio for it. Uh, you know, the, where people can say it into the mirror and it seems like it starts to take over more and more. And it seems like it's starting to take him over. Um, so I don't know how they're going to play it up. I know Tony Todd will be back, uh, on IMDb is not listed as this character. Uh, but I have a feeling he will be, I have a very strong feeling he will come back. I have a very strong feeling this is going to be written in such a way, an interesting way, where it will be transferred over and um, Yaya will take over the role as this character right here. This one, whose name I will not say. I've said it twice already and that's it. I will never say it again in my life. Uh, and I will avoid the bathrooms for the next six weeks. But call me what you will. I'm 6'8". I am over 400 pounds. I've been in plenty of fights in my life, and I will not say that name or the other one's name. You know who. BM. So, I don't challenge the voodoo. I ain't, I'm messing with that. No. So, with that, the movie looks awesome. Looks like it's going to be vicious. Looks like it's going to be scary. Uh, I will 100% go see it. Um, and I'm super excited to see what happens. And if they can... Again, talking about this in a generational story, we've just kind of been the theme of tonight. If they can re-image this, still connecting to the old franchise, and then have that good of an actor take over the role forward, I'm in. I'm in, because don't, I take nothing away from Tony Todd. 
I love Tony Todd. I love him in all his movies. He is that character. He's a character actor. That's what he is. And he was great as this character. But he wasn't the best actor. You know, he was a great character, but he wasn't the best actor. He played the roles that Tony Todd could play. And he did them well. Um, so, but if you can get a caliber of like Yaya to step in and do it, uh, you're taking us to a whole new, a whole new realm. And I, I wouldn't, I'm a hundred percent it. Now, with that being said, if this whole movie is a play to look like Yaya is going to be the next him, I am. And then at the end, they kind of hoodwink you and take it away. And it's like, no, Tony Todd's back. And this is just a one-off or whatever. Cool with that too. I'm all right with it. So that's potential spoiler. So sorry. Um, but that trailer has just dropped. It's coming out in June. Get excited because I feel like you know. Last year we had Child's Play remake come out um, in June, but it just wasn't. It wasn't there for me. That wasn't the one that would just did not hit. Like I didn't mind the direction they took it. But I think with all, I think with as good as the Child's Play movies got with Cult of Chucky and the one that came out after, or, or no, it was it uh, Curse of Chucky and the Cult of Chucky? I was like, you guys are doing really well. Why are you remaking this? So I just felt it was unwant, unwarranted, or unneeded. You know, I, I felt like take it and run with it. But whatever, uh, I think that this will work. I think that. Uh, not saying it again, the movie that shall not be named, you can go check out the trailer, it just dropped today, uh, will work, and I'm excited for it. So, that being said, let me know what you guys think. You know, as always, hit me up. I am on Instagram, I am on Twitter, I am on Facebook, I am here on YouTube, I am here on SoundCloud, Acast, all these different things. If you go to thescenesnobs.com, it's all there, all linked. You can go check out any show, on any po platform, podcast platform, or YouTube. And, you know, just comment. Let me know what you guys think. I want to hear it. I want to know what you, you know, you fans are thinking about. And what you think about the show. What can I improve? You know, going from there. Uh, we got a lot of cool stuff coming up. Like I said, we got Lost Weekend 13. That's a uh, film festival. That's at Alamo Draft House in Winchester. We are proudly sponsoring that. Um... Oh, I forgot to mention, uh, all of those places you can find me on social media at The Scene Snob. Or just go to the links and you'll find everything. So, but at The Scene Snob on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And you can hit me up there and I'm very active on there. Uh, take requests for reviews, things like that. So, feed them to me. I, I love it. But we got lots of cool stuff coming up. Remember, I got AT White uh, I'm going to be interviewing. Um, that should be out uh, probably Sunday, I think. Uh, if not, it'll be out next week, but it'll be a special. Um, we have John Carpenter Appreciation Week next week, so pay attention to every every show, because every show is going to be John Carpenter oriented. oriented. Um, and then we're going to be uh, uh, unveiling our new podcast, which is Behind the Box, like I said. Uh, I talked about all this earlier, but I just kind of want to retouch down on it. Uh, like I said, last weekend is March 19th through 22nd. We are proud sponsors. Go get your tickets. Go check it out if you're in the area. Um, also, uh, just so you guys know, there's another group. Uh, now, I'm going to explain this and show the picture of their logo. And they are ARE, which is the AIDS response uh, effort. And they are raising money uh, by doing... They're heading up the silent auction at Lost Weekend. So make sure you guys donate. Take care of them. Let's raise them a lot of money. What The work they do is very important. Um, and you know, I don't work with them at all, but like I support what they're doing. So make sure you're giving a lot of money for, for them, uh, to help out in the, uh, AIDS response effort. So ARE, remember that, um, and go check them out. And they're right here, based right here in Winchester, Virginia. So that being said, that's the show. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I will be back again next week and, uh, love you guys. Take care.